Let's quickly get into this. So we're quickly going to have a look at urban climates, as you can see, and we have two diagrams that represents 2.4a and 2.4b. Okay, first of all, I want you to pay attention to the following, right? The one, as you can see, is situated in a valley. Okay, and the other one is just normal on a flat surface, okay? And some arrows that represents probably insulation. And then, as you can see on the x-axis, we have temperature, as you can see. That's warm, and eventually, how higher you go, how cooler it gets. Okay, as you can see, there's cool temperatures, there's warm temperatures, and as you can see, it goes higher. And then we need to pay attention to the letters because it all represents something. We're going to have a look at that now. A, B, and C. Okay. And once again, as you can see, the city, you can see that A is escaping from the city areas. Right. Now, what I can see is this is heat that's being generated by the, okay, generated by the CBD. But what do we have at A over here? It seems to me we have a inversion. Okay. So what happens? As you can see, this warm air and smog, let's call it smog. What is smog? A mixture of pollution. Oops. Let me just wipe this out. It's a mixture of pollution and fog. Okay, and what I can see here, it's being trapped below the inversion, so it can't escape. You can see it situated at C, and this might be because it's situated in the valley, but we'll discuss that with you in detail. Okay, let me quickly just explain a valley inversion to you, because I can reckon I'm 100% sure, 110% sure this is going to be the question regarding valley inversions. Okay. Valley inversions is when an inversion happens in the valley, okay? But we have different types of breezes that we experience in valleys. We experience anabatic breezes during the day, and we experience catabatic breezes during nights. But this usually happens during night times in winter, okay? And I'm quickly going to show you the diagram representing it. So anabatic is quite simple, okay? You've got your valley, okay? This is going to be... Your valley, one is during the day, one is during the night. Okay, so what happens? The slopes warm up and the air rises parallel with the slopes and is known as anabatic breezes. Okay, but during winter, what happens? Okay. It gets extremely cold. What happens? The air sinks to the bottom of the valley. There's convergence taking place. Okay. So when the air sinks down parallel with the slope, it's usually known as catabatic breezes. Okay. The interesting thing happens during winter. Now what happens? The surrounding slopes cools down. Okay. So the air collects at the bottom of the valley. What does it do with the air that was already inside the valley? Displaces the air. Okay. So what happens? There was warm air inside this valley. What happens? This warm air, cold air, sinks to the bottom of the valley and it displaces the warm air, creating a... Oops, sorry. A thermal belt. And this thermal belt represents an inversion. Okay, and we discussed inversions just a little bit earlier. Okay, an inversion when there's an increase of temperature with an increase of altitude. Okay, now as you can see what happens. We go from cold temperatures to warm temperatures. It's not normal, is it? It's supposed to get colder, am I correct? So inversion has been created because this cold air has displaced the warm air. Now in the bottom of the valley, usually during winter, we experience what we know as the frost pocket. So 
We need to be able to plant frost resistant crops down the, the bottom of the valley. Now, if you're a farmer, you're just rather going to farm halfway up the slopes because it's the firmer belt, it's warmer, okay, depending on the north facing slope and south facing slopes. Okay, but that's, I can guarantee you, that's basically what happens over here. But now they've thrown in settlement into this question. Now, as you can see, settlement, let's assume this is the CBD. Now, what do we do in the CBD? Obviously, pollution. Okay, what else? We create artificial heat. And when I mean artificial heat, think of the pollution that's been created by the cars. We're using generators. We're using air conditioning, right? We are using uh, small, uh, what do you call it, light industries, textile industries, right? My use fire, bakeries, etc. It creates artificial heat. Okay. And if you look at CBDs, likely, most likely less vegetation, right? Because it's build up, it's artificial surfaces, such as tar road surfaces, concrete buildings. And what do they do? They absorb so much heat. Okay. So they're creating warmer conditions. But now, with this inversion layer above, what happens to all that pollution? It tries to escape, but it can't. It's trapped. Okay. Creating a nasty, nasty conditions to go and live in. Okay. Now, anyway, that's the thermal belt inversion that's being explained over there. But just let's have a look at the question. Define the te term temperature inversion. I mentioned it. I'm just going to write it. Increase of temperature with increase of altitude. Okay, now if you look at question 2.4.2, this figure 2.4a or 2.4b represents day conditions. Okay. Definitely 2.4a. Why? Because we can see incoming insulation. Insulation means incoming solar radiation. We can see it. Okay. So definitely A. Now my reason for it is because we can see the incoming solar radiation. is present. Fantastic. Now 2.4.5. Explain how building density in figure 2.4 contributes to higher temperatures within the CVD. Okay, now if you look at it, I've mentioned it, sorry, I need to do question 2.4.4 first. I just answered this. This is the wrong place. Sorry guys. Okay, so incoming solar radiation is the correct answer for 2.4.3. Okay, I'm just going to write the insulation. Okay, compare the air movements at B in figure 2.4a with that of the air movements at C. Okay, let's see what's happening at B. Okay, first of all, you can see it basically escapes the air movement. But look at C, it's being trapped. Okay. Now, obviously, there's a much more uprising of air because it creates a draft, a draft, okay? As you can see, the smoke is moving up, okay? So we can mention at B, right, there is stronger updrafts. Okay, and there's more convection. But if we compare it to C, what do we see what's happening over there? Inversion prevents the smoke to escape. And we can also say there's less convection because it's nighttime. Because it's night. 
Okay.